Hi everyone! In today's class, we're going to design some dynamic characters together. Last week, we looked at how to draw dynamic characters from a whole bunch of different poses. Let me see if I can find them. Here's one kicking a strawberry. So we did a whole bunch of different kids, you know, jumping and, and kicking stuff. And that was just a study session. But today, we're gonna have some fun actually designing characters. So I have got a sheet here in front of me with just some cleaned up poses that I did. So if you still have your drawings from last time, you can actually use those and trace them off with a clean piece of paper on top. You can just, just see them through the paper if you did them with black outlines or maybe with a color marker. But I'm gonna draw these from scratch and then I'm just gonna draw some cool random people and we'll see what, what we can come up with. First, let me see. I'm gonna start with this running pose and I'm quickly gonna redraw that body. So if you wanna do that with me, you can do that now. Start with the head. Always with the head first. Middle line. Do my eye line. So I actually don't have any like set ideas for what I want to do for, for these three characters. And sometimes if you're struggling with ideas, then you can just look back on one of your old drawings and, and redraw you know, a character that you already have. But if you don't want to do that and you want to do something, something fresh, then I love going onto Pinterest and just seeing what pops up. Pinterest is such a great place for, for fresh ideas. There's always something new to draw. So I think today we'll, we'll visit Pinterest and see what, what it throws at us. Shoulder. Those nice big shoulder potatoes. Body line angled, angled nicely down. Chest line. And as I'm redrawing this, I think I'm gonna make just a couple of adjustments. I, I, I want this character to be a lady character. So I'm just gonna demarcate the chest a little bit more and add in a separate uh, middle section. Upper body, same size as the lower body. So I drew this pose a couple of days ago for one of my characters. Let me show you. And I'm really happy with how it came out. I actually ended up drawing an entire like manga page for her. Yay! But this pose, I did change it a little bit. So I made it a little bit more a little bit more powerful for her because she is chasing a dude that just stole her handbag. Not just taking a lovely little run through the park. All right, where were we? This leg's coming forward, so he goes first. I think for this pose, I'd love to do something, something sporty. Like someone exercising, uh, running through, through a park, maybe down the street. And sadly, I'm not gonna fit the other leg in. It happens to me all the time, but that's okay. Don't always need both feet. Rather, rather take your character off the page than, than try and squeeze them in. I see a lot of kids squeezing in their characters, forcing them to fit into the page, and then drawing me little baby, little baby legs. <sighs> All right, one arm. Okay, and other arm. And I've just got little blocks for the hands because I'm going to fill those in later. 
Alrighty, I'm happy with this basic pose. Let's go to Pinterest and see what it throws at us. Alrighty, I've got Pinterest open and let's have a look around. <gasps> Immediately, I love this one. The sporty pose is beautiful. Let's see what else we have. <gasps> a little chihuahua. <laughs> so cute. I can wait back to business. I really like that first one. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, hey, like that is super cool. It's so, I love those vibrant colors. Let's, let's do this cool outfit. Let's get those pants down. Let's see. They don't come up too high. We can put them down here. And let's get this pant leg in. It's got a little bit of like a, a slit thing. Like over here. Let's see, this line goes up. I always try and pay close attention to the patterns on whatever it is I'm drawing because those can be very helpful with laying out where the fabric goes. So by following those lines, I know that my fabric, I need a little bit more space on this side. It needs to go tight around the band of the waist over here. All right, there's my first pant leg in really fast. And we can take it this way and add just a couple of crinkles. Just a few, not too many. Let's do the other side. So this one, of course, is gonna be curving in the opposite direction, yeah? So this one is curving up, this one's curving down, because this leg is going back. And let's see where that line is gonna go. That, that pattern line, it's gonna be about here, yeah? So this has to go up, make a little, little slit over here, a little indent. Pattern going this way, but it's gonna disappear. We're not really gonna see much of it. So we can end that like that. And maybe a couple more crinkles. With fabric wrinkles, you gotta keep them very simple. Don't add too many, because then it's, it starts looking like skin wrinkles. It starts looking kind of old and grainy. So keep them as simple as possible. With pants and stuff, I'll add a couple more than with t-shirts. But if you just stick to adding two or three or four, that's, that's good enough. We can see that it's fabric just from those three or four wrinkles. That's all that you need. Now, because this leg is curving, is, is coming down, definitely want to make those socks, that sock line curvy. Well, I, I see this basic mistake often where people just add a straight line here for some crazy reason. But you can't do that. You need to follow the contour of your leg. You need to remember that it's 3D. Bring it down. Let's add a, a foldy over piece. Tongue for the shoe. I can't really see a lot of the shoe detail because it's just black, which is awesome because then we don't have to add any detail ourselves. So we can keep this shoe shape super basic. Like that. Drawing pieces of black clothing, it's, it's like a little cheat for if you're struggling to draw something, look for that thing, but with a black color, and then you don't have to worry about adding super detailed items, uh, super detailed lines. Like even with these black pants, these fabric fold pieces aren't even necessary because you can just color this whole thing just black in one color. I'm not gonna do that though. I'm gonna show you some tricks for how to add really nice highlights to black items of clothing. So I'm gonna keep all of my, all of my wrinkles. Alrighty, now for the jacket. So the jacket has got a collar and it's kind of flying open. Let's add a nice basic collar shape. I like starting with the inside line instead of starting immediately with the collar. Like let's get the flow of where the jacket is going first. So with the turn of the body, I'm gonna have this line just coming straightish, straight down like this. But then this one, let's make it pop, pop open like that. Yeah, that looks cool. Alrighty, now we can add the collar a bit. Here's kind of where the zipper would be. And these flappy bits coming up. Then for the collar, 
It's a great idea to start here behind the neck. Give it, give it a ridge and then drop it forward. Like that. And then let's take this line and just meet it back up with that one. Let's keep it simple. Yeah, that looks cool. Looks cool and sporty. Then let's go, let's go finish up the hands. It's the left hand, which means that the thumb is gonna be on the inside, yeah? So the thumb is gonna be about here, right? Let's do knuckle, knuckle, fade it down. The middle finger knuckle, that's the most important one for me. So I'll always add that one coming out a little bit. And let's start with the middle finger. We're gonna keep these hands very simple though. Next one a little bit smaller. Pinky finger, even smaller. But then the index finger, I'm gonna have it popping out. Like this. And adding some, adding some folds. Cool. Maybe we can even add a little bit of the palm showing over there. Yeah. And let's see what this jacket. This jacket is coming past the elbow. So the, the sleeve is gonna be over here. And again, make it nice, nice and curvy. You can really exaggerate the shape of a cuff of where the fabric is folding. Make it nice and thick. Now I'm not gonna worry about any wrinkles over here on the elbow. But then here on the upper arm, I'm gonna add a squiggle up into the shoulder. Let's see, let's just keep it straight. And then over here, over here there's a line for where a, a sleeve would attach to the jacket. So add that line in, it looks really cool. And I'm gonna have a little bit of the sleeve coming out here under the arm, another wrinkle, there we go. All right, this arm's done. For the next one, let's add in the hand. So this is the, the right hand going like this. It's a clenched fist. Alrighty, let's have the thumb popping out over here, a little bit, and then going down into a little block. Yep. A little piece of skin going this way. And then right here in this, in this cove, that's where the first finger is gonna go. Lower part of the finger. Next part. The next part. One, two, three. We're keeping it, keeping it simple. Then there is the knuckle. Take it down and make a little triangle. Cool, there it is. Very, very basic. We're not doing any heavy detail for the hands right now. And let's take that sleeve, just lower than the elbow. This curvy is going this way. There's a foldy over bit for the sleeve. And then coming up. Now, the elbow is over here and it's going back, yeah. So let's add some wrinkles over here. Kind of pulling, pulling down that way. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Lots of crinkles. Then up straight into the shoulder, straight back into the collar. And this chest line over here is gonna be perfect for where that jacket line is, for where the arm meets the rest of the body of the jacket. And that makes a great place for some shadow. Now we've got this flap flapping to the back. So let's add a line over here. Let's take it back, like disappearing behind the arm. No, it should be in front. And let's bring it forward. And I'm using lots of, lots of straight edges for this jacket. They make your drawing seem a lot more decisive, like you're in control of it. 
Now I'm not talking about like sketchy lines. Sketchy lines are fine. We all use those to figure out what we're doing. But then stick to, stick to straight lines. Now what are we gonna do for her shirt? Hmm. Let's, let's just do like a plain running shirt. Like just a little running crop top would be great. I'm actually just gonna follow my waistline over here. And yay, basic shirt. Let's add a belly button. Now for her hair. She's got a ponytail, so we can, we can put these hairlines in a little bit darker. Then let's take it past the ear. Even with my hair, I like adding straight lines. Remember to take the hair above the skull line, right? The initial face circle that we did. Hair is puffy, it needs to go around your head. And let's add a cool ponytail popping up right here. So giving my hair, to, to, to give my hair really nice movement, I added these flicks, yeah? These nice straight, shoo, flicks. So those straight lines come in handy for movement as well. Usually I start with the face details, unless I don't know what I'm doing with my face. Let's, what kind of expression can we give her? Oh, she looks really happy. This pose looks like she's having a good time. Okay, nose. You can do your nose however you want to do it. I love making big noses. Okay, now for eye shape. All right, I've just got a, I've got a normal standard eye shape. I'm gonna give her some nice eyelashes. Darken that upper eyelid. eyelid. That always looks really nice. And I'm gonna make her look, let's do, let's do directly at the camera. All right, I added the pupils, but I haven't like finished off like a perfect circle for the pupil. Like just a little, like a six shape. It looks really nice. It's like, it's leaving space for the highlight already. All right, let's give it some friendly eyebrows. Remember, you can be nice and big with your eyebrows. You don't have to do little baby eyebrows. I especially love doing bushy eyebrows. All right, and now finally, a smile. When you're going into really small details, like the stuff on the face, make sure that your pencil is really sharp or switch to a clutch pencil for that really fine tip. That's gonna help you with those tiny details. Should we give her some lip detail? Yeah. All right, that's nice. And she looks a bit worried. Hmm. Hmm, now she looks angry. Hmm, actually that's kind of cute. Can't get this eyebrow. Okay. I'm gonna add some ear detail over here, just a little. Mm -hmm. Lip and maybe a little earring. You know what it is? Her eyes are just a little bit creepy. Like when you smile, your your cheeks like close your eyes a little bit. You know the under eyelid closes up. So let's bring this under eyelid a little bit higher. Get rid of these inside lines. Oh, that's so much better. Like instantly. So much better. So remember that if your people are looking creepy, it's one, either your eyebrows are, are too angry or too high, making them look surprised, or it's just those lower eyelids. They need to be, they need to be adjusted. So either higher for that happiness or lower for if they're being intense and scary. All right, I'm happy with that. Let's go on to the next one. Let's do this bicycle person. This body base we drew based on that picture of Albert Einstein on a bicycle. And that was a challenge for the last class. So whoever actually tried to do it, good job. And I hope it came out really nice. But if it, doesn't, if it didn't, let's just do it again over here. 
Do you see we're doing the same face shape for almost every body base that we do? That's just because we want to get it down on paper as fast as possible without worrying about the details. Details come later. Just get the basic shapes down first. Like for the whole head, I keep things as generic as possible so that I can adjust them according to my person later on. So for this bicycle person, their shoulders are coming up really high, like the neck is coming forward because you slouch forward while riding bicycles. Shoulder potatoes over here. And that center body line is just going straight down. I have no idea if I want to do a boy or a girl for this. So I'm keeping that chest lines really basic. So we have the upper chest line and then the waist line is, is way too high. But it's fine. Mm, the back over here. One underpants line. A little bit curvy. And uh, other one is going out this way. It's a little bit lower than the first one. Cool. Let's do the arms. So I did the arms before I touched the bicycle frame and I kind of made the bicycle fit my person instead of trying to draw the bicycle first and then drawing the human on top of it. But whichever way you want to do it, that's cool. Whatever works for you. When it comes to my people holding objects or interacting with something, I never either do one thing first and then the other one, like first the object and then the person, or first the person and then they're holding a puppy or a tea kettle or something. I kind of do them both at the same time to see how they fit together. Like, I'll draw whatever is in front first, or maybe whatever is behind first, like whatever is more important in that portion of the drawing. So I have the upper body that's behind some pieces of the bicycle and I have the arms coming forward that's gonna grip the steering wheel. The handlebars! But I felt that the arms were more important than the handlebars. So I did those first and now I'm gonna start with the body of the bicycle. For the bicycle, I tried looking for an anchor point which was this thing. It's like the place where the handlebar meets the rest of the bicycle. And then that gives me a direction for where everything else is gonna go. Then there's this piece. And now I'm gonna do the handlebars. And yeah, they might be a little bit skew and a little bit weird, but that's cool. Like they're they're turning a little bit this way, so that one can be a little bit a little bit shorter than the other one. Let's do bicycle wheel. A nice flat oval. Alrighty. Where's the middle of the bicycle? Over here. I mean the wheel. And then there's this thing coming up this way. Had the same on the other side, but we're not going to worry about that. Then I'm going to add, well, I'm just going to add some definition to this wheel quickly. Just to make that oval a definite shape. Alrighty, then the outer line. And for the outer line, on this side I'm making it thinner. And then coming forward, I'm making it thicker. So it looks like the wheel is turned with a thick piece in front. Alright, now I'm going to add those spokes. And I'm not really caring too much about spacing. You can see that it's a bicycle. You can see that it's spokes. So that's cool. And then there's this thing that came up like this. Now we can go back to the legs. And I'm going to do the legs before I put in pedals. So this leg is coming out at an angle. And then the foot is somewhere over here. But the other leg came down a little bit more straight. Because if this leg, if the pedal is up, then the other one needs to be down. So it makes sense that this leg would be lower. I have no idea what I want to do with this person. We can do a cute girl on a bicycle, or we can do a little boy. We'll see what Pinterest has. All 
Right there's the foot. So underneath the feet is going to be the pedals. And then last of all, I want to add in the seat. Just sticking out a little bit over there. And then the seat pole is over here and that's just, that's just, and that's just there, finished. We don't have to worry about the other nonsense. The other pieces of the bikes is fine. All right, let's see what Pinterest can give us for somebody on a bicycle. Let's search for anime, anime bicycle. Anime bicycle aesthetic, let's check that out. Ooh. Oh, that's super cool. All right, I love this. Let's draw this dude. So I'm gonna switch over to my clutch pencil for this nice detail. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with the head this time. So this time I'm doing some anime style facial features. So sometimes if I don't really know what I'm gonna do with the face, then I also love to just sketch in the basic shapes, get things on paper as quickly as possible. Then you can see what kind of adjustments you need to make. So now I know that I need to adjust my, my face shape. And he's got some bubble gum. And I'm putting it slightly off center. I don't want it to be directly in the middle. And I'm gonna make him look off to the side because he is turning the bike after all. I don't want him directly staring at the camera. So now that I have his pupils in, I, I wanna make these eyebrows a lot thinner. They're way too thick. I'm also gonna thicken the upper eyelid just like I did for the previous girl character. It just looks so nice. I'm still gonna make this guy's eyebrows very low. Like, he's kind of nonchalant. All right, time for hair. Now let's do the hat first. So the hat has got the, the front piece. I don't have no idea what it's called. <laughs> no, I don't know, the, the front flappy bit. The shade part. I always do that first. I might see a little bit of the back, but nah, let's skip it for now. All right, time for hair. And I don't want my hair to just be super flat coming out of the cap. See, I, I want it to stand out a little bit. And remember now with hair, you want bits. And I'm gonna have my hair going that way. So that's my first piece. I know I can build off of this one. Go over the head a little bit. Let's add in the ears. And then some more hair. I don't wanna make his hair seem too long, but oh, that looks okay. And now maybe I'll add a bit of the back of the cap. Let's add the outfit. And uh, yeah, let's start with the hands. So hands around bicycle bar. You're gonna see the thumb and all five fingers. So let's start with knuckles. And the middle knuckle is my highest one. And start with the middle finger. Other finger kind of fitting into it. Another finger fitting in. And then a little pinky. And then we want the thumb to come out. The thumb is going to be just over here. Just a little bit. Cool. And we can do the same for the other hand. Big knuckle, middle finger first. And the other hands, other fingers just kind of fit into it. 
it's a great idea having at least one finger sticking out a little bit more than the other ones. It just creates a more interesting hand and it's better than having all of the fingers just magically somehow on the same level. Remember that your fingers are different sizes. So this dude has his sleeves rolled up and we can have fun with some big shapes now. And remember that flicking thing that I do. Instead of trying to make curves, you know, make, make flicks. Make your outfit seem more interesting. With these random big shapes. Neck piece is just kind of round. And this is a, it's a puffy jacket. So don't take it tight against the body. Let it puff out. You'll see I'm making these little V marks and you can do that to show where the fabric is folding in, where there's gonna be shadow. It's just a quick way of making fabric lines. For the pants, we've got some rips in the pants. Let's do those first. On the other side, this big one over the knee. Rolled up at the at the calf. And let's add the jeans. So I'm taking the jean lines over where the initial pants line were was. And remember to give it some bagginess. As for shoes, this dude is wearing tight socks. With anime art and with manga, you'll, you'll notice that they don't take every single item of clothing perfectly over the body lines. Artists there have a really great mix of baggy material and also material that is perfectly tight against the body. Just like these socks, they don't have to go slightly over the body lines. Make them tight. Let's add some quick shoes. Now I'm noticing that I've got little baby feet, so I'm making my shoes a little bit bigger. When it comes to shoes, I always do that tongue sticking out first. It makes everything just so much easier. Hmm, let me see if I can quickly fix this guy's eyes. I gave him a grown-up anime eyes. That should be easy to fix. Let's make him a little bit cuter. I'm giving him big eyes. Alrighty, that looks a lot better. All right, now I'm gonna move on to some inking and coloring. So this will be the first time that I'm actually inking or coloring something on camera. So if I mess up, can't judge me because it's your fault for putting me under pressure. And for, for my comic style girl, I'm gonna use my brush pen 
But for my anime boy, I'm going to use a 0.3 for those super fine details and also a 0.1.